Hello, welcome to another episode of Patrice's Projects. Today's project will be compost. I had started a compost pile to, um, during the f late fall, early winter, and it didn't do real well. So we're, I'm going to jumpstart that compost back into going. I have some new uh, grass clippings that I'm going to throw in there as part of our um, nitrogen source. I also have a lot of kitchen scraps I've been collecting over the last couple of months, maybe longer. And um, I also have the manure that uh, my son and I picked up, uh, fall leaves as well. So it's going to be a pretty good sized one, so hopefully this time it does real well. Um, we'll see. Come along. Okay, so I've brought the leaves out here, and I've dumped one bag, and I've got another one right there to dump. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, rake them around, make them a little bit more smooth, and then I'm going to mow right over them. So let's see how that works for me, especially since they're damp. So let's get to it. Now my lawnmower is really old and really um, loud, so I'll probably mute this part, but I'm just going to hopefully mow over it and get a good outcome, otherwise I have to rake this stuff back up. So here we go. So you know how I was saying the lawnmower was really old, and uh, apparently it was real old. So I could not get it to start. In fact, I uh, the little metal piece that goes around the ring where the pull cord goes through, that had come loose prior. And um, so well, I kept pulling on it and that little ring fell in there and you could no longer pull anyway. So here we are at Lowe's waiting for our mowers to come out of those doors. So I guess I'll see you when I get this our brand new mower. As the update over at the hardware store showed, we do have a new lawnmower now, so we put it together and I'm getting ready to mow over these. So let's, I'll even uh, videotape us starting it for the very first time. Be right back. Okay, old mower, you did as well for a while, but you've been replaced by this newer orange model, so out with the old. Okay, so my little camera failed me. It was great. We had great footage. I know it was perfect. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, the mower started up first pull, and I mulched a whole, more than a whole bag full because the bag got way too full. It didn't mulch as small as I wanted, but it is better than the big pieces I had. So we're going to try this one more time to have me mulching this stuff up with the mower. down all at one time. We're expecting rain soon, so I had to rake them all up and bag them, but it did help to make them a lot more crumbly, as you can see. So, whoop, I'm dropping them on the lawn. Oh well. Uh, some areas. Let me find a spot. I had a... Oh, okay, here. See how torn up that is? And then other places, I, I mean, I've got just leaves that are slightly beat up still. But overall, it did a, a good job at making them a lot smaller so that they'll compost easier. See that? Where it's all destroyed. It's going to work much better in the compost pile. So um, another thing that you can use is a leaf blower if you have the attachment that sucks up. But either way, you really want your leaves crunchy. See, mine are just still uh, flexible. 
And even though they sat there on the uh, lawn for a day while I bought a new mower, it, they still didn't dry out near enough it, as much as they should to use this method. But I had no other method to use uh, to um, make my leaves in a smaller, um, a smaller size so that they'll compost quick. But these are um, good leaves for composting anyway. They aren't that huge, so I'm not too worried about it. And with that manure and everything that I have to put in there, I'm sure that it's going to break down fine. Um, thank you for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. I hope you learned something. Uh, if you ha have a different way of um, making your leaves into a smaller size, um, let, uh, put in in the comments below. If you like the video, give, us, give me a thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe. I'd appreciate that too. And yada, yada, yada. So I keep saying today is compost day, but today really is compost day. Um, yesterday, uh, after getting the lawn mower and mowing over the leaves and everything, I, what's funny is I did that conclusion that I just kind of cut off somewhere along it. Um, so today really is compost day. I have lots of ingredients for it. It's kind of like a recipe. When we started bringing all this stuff out, I realized it, this is kind of like doing a, a cooking show. I feel like I should have a, an apron on for this uh, recipe. So what you do is you take had lots of kitchen scraps. This bucket here, this is the one that we've been collecting in for a long time. We don't want to look inside of there. I won't subject you to that. You can watch us dump it in from a distance, but I'm not going to open it and show that to you. Especially, you might be eating, I don't know. So here is one that is some more recent kitchen scraps. That one's pretty nasty too. But all those banana peels and all that are going to compost real well, put a lot of nutrients into the soil. And on my first episode, I mentioned that I had, you can back up just a little. I had mentioned that I made um, a little compost bin out of a licorice container, and this is it. All I did was I uh, took off the label, and I sanded it lightly, put some spray paint on after taping certain parts off that I didn't want to paint, like the little top here. I don't know why I did that. I thought it was cute. But I wanted it to have some character and look cute on the counter, so I added this white stripe. I just painted that on by hand. And that's my little kitchen one. And that's full too. That's just from like three days of collecting, but we had cantaloupe, salad, stuff like that. And then, adding to it, two bags of mulched up leaves. These, when I first put them in, were full bags. And then they're down to here. So that would be two bags of mulched up leaves. And then to that, you add two containers. This one is coffee grounds that I had uh, taken all the, uh, dried them out kind of, and then put the coffee grounds into the container because I knew it was going to be a while till I could compost. And this one, I did it, <laughs> I did it in the lazy way, but I know that the uh, filters can compost so I went ahead and just put the whole thing in there until I ran out of room and then I went back to the drying the, the coffee uh, in the filter and then shaking it into this oh, into that okay and today we have the special ingredient of manure a good dose of manure we're not gonna put this whole thing in because I, I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to put I think we'll go with half and then the, the big ingredients would be uh, two um, large lawns worth of, or actually two mowings worth of lawn clippings because I have the older ones which had turned brown so they're more of a carbon source. And then we have a really big yard so all of this is from one mowing but it is on top of that previous mowing and see down here is the compost that I had previously made. That is not a huge pile, but it, it was a lot of uh, material to begin with. And in it, you can even see some of the cantaloupes that are still trying to sprout in there. But it is warm in there. I can feel it. So it's working, but we're, we're going to supercharge this. So let's get mixing it up. Okay, so maybe I was a little bit wrong. This is kind of funny. It is raining really good right now. I'm getting quite wet, so I think maybe we'll hold off till later today because I, th I think it's supposed to ease up a little. Can you see this? Not right now. It's not. No, it's not. Okay, let's go ahead and cover some stuff up here. 
That's what we'll do. I'll, we'll come back to this, I promise. Because the wind picked up some after the rain started earlier, I put you at a different location and it's still, you're still going to get a lot of wind noise, but I think it'll be a little bit more protected. Um, last year, what I used to make my compost was I used a, a wire cage type method where I just took some um, cheap fencing, I made it into a circular thing, kind of bent it over onto itself to attach it. These were already in it. These are just sticks that I had in it when I was using it to trellis some peas before. And I figure for added support, I just leave them in there. And um, so what you do is you just pile in your layers in there, and then every few days, every three or four days, we would try and wrestle this thing off of the pile and then uh, mix it up a little bit and dump it back into another, you know, would kind of switch it back and forth uh, from location to location. And it, it worked pretty good, but it was a lot of work. But this year, our compost pile is going to be bigger than what this can handle, I hope. And besides, uh, just a big heap is going to be a lot easier to work with than having to use this. So this is out. And so my, my helper has uh, gone inside, and he's in the middle of a video game. So. Uh, it's just me right now, and uh, hopefully he comes out in a little bit and um, helps me out with this. Let me give you a little bit better of an angle, and you won't be able to hear very well because I'll be with my back to you most of the time, which I've heard already that when I turn my head and my hair hangs over or I turn my head, you can't hear me as well. So hopefully, for one, this fence is going to bring my voice back, and uh, secondly, um, I'll try to remember that if I'm saying something to turn around this way. However, it's me and I forget a lot. So, on with the compost. Hopefully this time the rain's, uh, it's still sprinkling a touch. Hopefully this time it won't rain on me and it's still sprinkling a little bit, but um, let's keep our fingers crossed and let's get on with it. Because I don't want to um, mix everything up all up right now, except for maybe the compost and some of the grass clippings, I'm going to be doing the lasagna method where you do layer after layer and uh, just let it compost that way until the first turning. So let's start. Okay, yeah, I uh, took most of the grass clippings off of the compost pile first, and now I'm going to just go ahead and start doing the layers. I think I'll start with some uh, leaves so that it has aeration on the bottom because I, this time I want to do an aerobic uh, compost pile. The last time I intended to as well, but it just didn't work that way. My very first compost did work because it was during warmer weather when we were able to turn it without uh, it getting completely drenched by the rains and you know, just nasty weather we had this year. So, uh, and also it was cold, so it just wasn't composting. Uh, let's get on with it. should have been when I collected them, but they'll do. And, you know, there's different people that say different uh, amounts of carbon and nitrogen. I'm obviously going to have quite a bit of nitrogen with all this grass and all my uh, kitchen scraps, but these bags actually did hold a lot of leaves, so this is a lot. It just, because I put it through the mower, and because it's still damp, whoa, there they go again, and because it's so damp, uh, it just doesn't look like all that much. So now I'm going to go ahead and put some of the grass. I did it again. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some of the grass clippings on there, and then a layer. I'm oh, starting here and again. A layer of um, the uh, compost and then some kitchen scraps.
playing with the compost and uh, grass clippings earlier, so it's kind of mixed in. But because it's already partially composted, uh, it has all that bacteria to help jumpstart the whole thing going, plus the manure and the kitchen scratch as well. We did it! Finally, the compost pile is done. And uh, it did rain off and on, and it drizzled almost the entire time we're doing it. But I had to finish it yesterday if I was going to get, get it done um, anytime soon, because yesterday was Sunday. And Ian goes to school, obviously. He's 15. So in order for me to get his help, which I really needed, in fact, he did almost all the heavy stuff after what you saw me doing. It's just too much for my back, and um, he he's just indispensable with my gardening, and uh, he doesn't know that yet, and he probably won't watch this video, so he has no clue how uh, much I depend on him. And um, I love doing compost. I just wish I could do it all by myself without having to ask for help. Uh, it's probably one of his least favorite things, but putting it together, he didn't seem to mind too much, just turning it, which he's going to be doing a lot of. So... Um, let me show you the compost pile. It uh, has settled some because of the rain and also um, it, that's what it's going to do. It's got leaves in it and such. And um, so let's take a look at it. So here you can see just how big it really is. I mean, it's more than two feet here. And look at the size. Well, you can't even see the other side. It's big. And last year I didn't have near enough materials because unless you collected your fall leaves and kept those, or uh, I don't have paper shredder good enough to use paper, but you can. Um, but it has to be shredded real small, and it will clump together, just like if you, if I didn't put thin layers of the leaves, they'll, they'll clump together too. So when you're doing the layering method like I did, uh, you want to just do thin layers of leaves so that they don't all clump together, or paper, just kind of sprinkle it on, put something else in there, sprinkle more on. Uh, you can get a lot of uh, leaves in there. Also, uh, carbon to nitrogen, so the grass and all the food scraps and everything, that's all the nitrogen sources, and I believe my compost would pretty much be a nitrogen source at this point, and uh, that stick, nice sticky stuff. Um, but the carbon sources would be the, the leaves, 
the manure has a lot of carbon in it, but it has nitrogen in it as well. I'm pretty sure. I'm not certain. Don't quote me on that. But um, one thing I wanted to check is uh, yesterday, when I felt the compost before we, we uh, put this one together, I put my hand underneath the grass and felt in there that it was warming up. Uh, let's see how this is doing because it, uh, yesterday it was raining and such and there was no sun on it so I know that any warmth in there will not be from that. So let's go ahead and that's kind of why I put this glove on. Put my hand in there. Normally if it's been composting a while I'll put my hand in without a glove. But I had those really nasty table scraps in there. Yep. It's warming. It's working already. That's And that's not even 24 hours uh, from the time we finished putting this together. So, really excited. We're going to turn it in a couple days, and uh, I'll bring you out here with me to do that. So, really excited about this pile. Okay, here we are back at the compost pile. It's day three. It's the day to turn it. I did want to take one more temperature reading of it before I uh, dig into it. And I had timed this to where Ian would be home for the first turning. It's Wednesday, he gets out of school early. And uh, unfortunately, at uh, three o'clock, I scheduled him a dentist appointment, so he won't be able to get it done today. Between, um, you know, he'll get home, rest a little bit, go to the dentist, come home, do homework, eat dinner, play some games, go to bed. So, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna do it with my back, but uh, it has to be done, so here we go. Uh, first, though, my the outside temperature, according to my thermometer in the shade, says 66. Uh, this area is a little bit warmer than where that is, so I'm not sure what it is. My thermometer says it, oh, I'm touching it, so it's going up. It is currently reading it's going up because I, it's in my hand, I guess. Uh, 78. Okay, it's at 78. And I put it in a bag this time to, so that hopefully I can either read through it or grab it out really quick before the temperature starts changing too much. Um, I'm thinking that if I do it just like this, that I could get it in there without closing it. It's not going to get touched by the compost and everything's gonna be good and well. So let's get, get it in there. And I'm in the shade over here in the back because it's harder to film me without a bunch of shadows in the sun. So where is, let me find the hunt. Oh, whoa, it is real. It's like hurting my hand in there. Okay, I wanna tunnel all the way in though. Get this thing all the way in there to the hottest part. Just gonna wait a little bit. Well, I guess while we're waiting, I thought I, I might. Uh, I read up a little bit on uh, composting and what causes the heat. Uh, because my memory uh, is pretty messed up from the painkillers I'm on all the time, um, it's hard for me to remember exactly what it said, like the terminology and uh, the different types of. Uh, organisms that are involved in breaking it down, but basically what happens is everything, all this material will compost naturally in a natural environment and it would be anaerobic because it's not going to be all compressed down with constant moisture and things like that and it's just going to cause it, you know, put down thin enough layers to decompose naturally in the wild. However, that takes a few years. I want weeks or months here, not years. <laughs> so by piling the different types of things together in, you know, the fashion I did, or, you know, you could mix it all up, uh, we're um, creating an environment to where the microorganisms and the, the fungi and all that stuff is going to help break it down faster. And it is that um, the microorganisms and uh, fungi causing the breakdown, which causes the heat. So while, while this stuff is uh, breaking down into soil matter uh, use, with all those microbes and microorganisms and uh, bacteria, 
that causes the heat to rise up. So, it should be ready by now. And let's see if I can get this thing. Let me make sure it's all the way in the hot, hot area before pulling it out. I want it to be as hot, hot as possible. Okay, ready? Set. Let's do this. Try to get it. Oh, I'm just trying to read it through the bag. It says. Oh, 120. Let me do it one more time, see if I can read it any faster. Because they, it said also that between 120 and 160 is the best temperature uh, for fast breakdown uh, of the um, compost because at that temperature, the bacteria that thrive in that temperature are the ones that are that do the best at uh, this decomposition. So let's read it one more time, real fast. Okay, we have it's just a little over 120. So and it's going down fast. So I'm assuming I have a little over 120 in there. And so I'm at a good temperature, but I mean at 140 would be great. But with the size pile, I'm not gonna count on that. Okay, we, we uh, took its temperature, it's doing well. Uh, my patient is doing that fine. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this patient over. See that steam? And the deeper in I go, the hotter it is. That steam. And the, uh, the temperature outside is not cold, it's warm. It, I mean, it's in the sun, it's over 70 degrees. So, that is working. But what I want to show you is the difference in the color inside here. I hope you can see it, all the fungus and such like that and the steamy stuff. You can see fungus and mold and such. That's what's causing all this nice hot uh, composting to happen. So this is exactly as it should be. Okay, I'm going to put you back over where you were. Okay, I should do this as quickly as I possibly can because I don't want to lose all the heat that, that all of this uh, composting has already generated. And since I've already dug into the middle, it's mixed up somewhat. So I'm going to go ahead and take some of this outer stuff. Because all I'm doing is I'm bringing it over here. I cannot move it or turn it over just where it is. That's too hard for me. So what we do is we move it back and forth from where it is to this, or we're going to be moving it to this spot. I was hoping that the rains on Sunday would have kept this pile moist long enough for me to get this first turn in without having to add any water. Tap water has chlorine in it and that does kill uh, bacteria. That's what it's meant to do in our tap water. But uh, hopefully I have enough bacteria going here to not cause it too much damage, so I'm going to go ahead and spray this turn part down just a little bit. Just a little. The moisture helps the whole composting process to happen. If it's like a moist sponge, um, that's good. If it's like soggy, like where you can wring it out, then that's too wet. <laughs> and you have to wait for it to dry out. Spread it out um, so it dries faster. Um, and this is just a, a bit more dry than I would prefer. So, and and what's uh, optimal for it. And I want it to go as fast as possible so I can use it in my garden this year. So, back to my uh, turning, and I'll uh, be back when I'm done. Oh, finally done. 
Okay, remember how I had said that the compost pile had settled um, with the rain that we had gotten uh, the day that we made the compost pile? It had rained uh, torrentially for just, you know, like maybe ten minutes at a time, but three or four times that happened. And see how much taller the compost pile looks now? Because I was digging at about this level before, putting my hand in, and it's this big now. I did add that little bit of uh, vegetable matter, which was minuscule. I also put a little bit of leaves in there uh, so that I have still the even nitrogen to carbon. And I think it's pretty even. Um, and it's working, so that's what matters. And uh, I'm going to hose it down just a little bit more. I did it uh, one other time when I was uh, just, I, I don't know, uh, three quarters of the way maybe and so I'm going to hose it down one more time especially the perimeter because that dries out a lot um, <laughs> that's all I can get isn't it so finally done okay uh, that's how I do it thank you for watching I really appreciate it if you like the video give me a thumbs up um, subscribe I'd really appreciate that I could use some sub subscribers and uh, give me some comments on how you do it or um, Give me some ideas on how I could better do it. Thanks for watching. Bye.